In May 2018, Ana Suda and Martha Hernandez were shopping for milk and eggs at a convenience store in Montana when U.S. Border Patrol stopped them because they were speaking Spanish. In March of 2019, Customs and Border Protection detained nine-year-old Julia Isabel Amparo Medina, a U.S. citizen, for more than 30 hours. In July 2019, Francisco Erwin Galacia, a Dallas-born teenager, was held in Immigration and Customs Enforcement custody for more than three weeks. The thing they all had in common is that they were assumed to be unauthorized immigrants because they are Latino. These racist assumptions have deep structural roots. Immigration laws in this country are often designed to keep Latino immigrants out or, when allowed, treated as disposable, marginalized, and often illegal. Let's take off the thin veil and expose the real roots of immigration policies. The very first Congress in the United States in 1790 established by law that, quote, free white persons of good character were the only people eligible for naturalization. In the 1920s, national origin quotas were enacted that favored Northern European immigrants. As the Great Depression pushed the United States into economic collapse, President Hoover used Mexican Americans as scapegoats and deported as many as 1.8 million Mexicans, the majority of them U.S. citizens. Amid a labor shortage during World War II, the Bracero program brought millions of Mexicans to the United States as temporary workers. But during a recession in the mid-1950s, 1.3 million Mexican-Americans, including many U.S. citizens, were deported as part of Operation Wetback. In 1965, the Immigration and Naturalization Act got rid of the racist national origin quotas, but replaced them with new restrictions on immigration from Mexico and other parts of Latin America. Too often, Society in the United States paints Latino immigrants as a drain on the economy. But did you know that when upwards of 80% of immigrants were white, no restrictions existed for accessing things like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and other parts of the social safety net? But in the 1970s, when immigrants became browner and more Latino, the government added restrictions. The legacy of these policies continues today. Even though undocumented immigrants pay $11 billion in state and local taxes each year, they are not eligible to claim many tax credits to support the health and well-being of their U.S.-born children. These same restrictions also shut them out of the first COVID relief legislation. The effects of these racist attitudes and actions impact Latinos today, citizens and immigrants alike. Let's remove the vestiges of racism from our immigration laws once and for all. And let's urge Congress to pass legislation to provide a path to citizenship to all 11 million undocumented immigrants. Let's imagine a system based on humanity and not on racist assumptions.